It's been 553 days since Cricket 22 came out. With a new cricket game, Cricket 24, in the near future, this is the perfect time to do one final review of Cricket 22, the final finished product, even though they're still adding stuff like camera angles and better crowd quality. Cricket 22 has a lot of amazing qualities and a lot of frustrating ones as well. Let's start with the good stuff. In my opinion, no cricket game has better, more satisfying batting than Cricket 22. It has an endless amount of shots, the difficulty is just right, challenging but still not completely unfair. You still have to create a custom difficulty because the hardest difficulty in the game is very hard which is great. But the problem is some shots are just too risky. Cover drives, cuts, advanced shots, even unorthodox shots like sweeps and reverse sweeps are less risky than cover drives and other traditional shots which makes less than zero sense. How can a scoop be safer than a cover drive? One of the biggest problems with batting is getting caught behind. If you play any shot on the offside, you will nick the ball to the keeper or slips. It doesn't matter if it's against spinners, if the ball is a half volley. I mean, batsmen regularly edge full tosses. I don't even know how that is possible. So it becomes a game of only one side. You have to play all your shots on only the leg side which of course gets really boring really fast. The strange thing is this happens only on the hardest difficulty. So if you're a new player, you will love batting because when you're playing on the hard or medium difficulty, you play shots to every corner of the ground. Since the game's release, Big Ant have improved certain things with batting, cut shots have become useful, unorthodox shots are not as overpowered as they used to be but they can for sure improve a lot more, especially when it comes to giving every shot the right amount of risk and reward. Cover drive should be a very safe shot, at least in ODIs and T20s. There are shots all around the ground, 3-4 different types as well, aggressive, push shots, chip shots, lofted and and advanced shots each have their advantages and disadvantages. For example, chip shots have perfect placement but very little power. Lofted shots are very powerful but sometimes they don't go exactly where you want them to. If you try to loft the ball straight, you might end up hitting the ball to long on and getting out. That is the reason you will play Cricket 22 for hundreds of hours. There is so much stuff and there is also the difficulty. You'll never be able to play on the hardest difficulty plus sliders to make the game even harder. Click the i-card on the top right to see how hard it truly is. Spoiler alert, you will get all out under 100 at most. Balling is good but it isn't great. It gets frustrating. In my opinion, Ashes Cricket 2017 has the best balling in any cricket game. Cricket 22 has too many little issues. Edges run right along the ground every time in the most unrealistic fashion. First slip is useless. AI batsmen are basically gods. And when you do get wickets, they aren't very satisfying. Most wickets are catches at the deep, clean bowls are very rare, most bowls are inside edges, keeper catches are also somewhat rare, taking wickets with spinners is a lot easier. All you need is a short leg fielder and batsmen will give you catch after catch after catch. But still, for me, bowling with spinners is a lot more fun than fast bowlers. Cricket 22 gave us a new fielding mini game for direct hits which is very basic and makes runouts way too easy but it's fun. Same with the catching mini game, basic but it's good enough. The problem with fielding is everything in between. Keepers are slower than 80 year olds, fielders have a nice nap before throwing the ball. Instead of collecting the ball near the stumps, bowlers will run towards the ball for no reason. All of that is frustrating and you will miss so many runouts because of this. Even when batting this happens, then it is funny but still it makes the game feel far less realistic. The biggest improvement in Cricket 22 since launch is graphics. I think Big Ant have consistently improved how the game looks. The biggest graphics improvement came a month ago. I don't know if it was a patch, update or something but suddenly the game looked awesome. Crowds look like a group of people instead of cardboard. Lighting seems much better. They even have added a bird's eye angle of the ground that is new as well and pretty cool. Overall, if you want a good looking cricket game, Cricket 22 will not disappoint one bit. 
These patches are probably Cricket 24 stuff that they are adding to 22, but seriously, keep doing this, big ad. So, should you buy Cricket 22 in 2023? Absolutely. It's half the price of Cricket 24, which hasn't released yet, nor do we know its release date, and I think that the game will be buggy at launch. So either buy Cricket 22 now or wait for Cricket 24, see if it is any good, then you can decide. I haven't talked about the career mode because it hasn't changed at all. But if you want to hear my thoughts, check these two Cricket 22 reviews on the screen that I made when Cricket 22 first came out and then six months later. For now, subscribe. It really means a lot. Thanks for watching and have a great day wherever you are.